Hola Riders, gracias por seguirnos en nuestras plataformas de The Driver Show y Fast Element. Hoy tenemos una entrevista súper especial con un talento global en el mundo motor, Greg Gurdin, y estaremos con él compartiendo sus impresiones de lo que él hace a nivel profesional y nosotros también aprender un poco de sus técnicas y de sus consejos. Estaremos compartiendo esta entrevista en el idioma inglés, que es el idioma más fluido de Greg, pero también quizás él introduzca algunas palabritas en español. Pero de todas maneras estará todo en subtítulos en este video. Hola chicos, soy muy contento de estar aquí en la República Dominicana. Yeah, uh, yeah, buddy, welcome again, uh, working on the Spanish. So as Angel said, uh, welcome to our country, uh, paradise, the Dominican Republic. Uh, we have a big motorsports uh, community, the driver show and fast element. We're looking forward in hearing from you a little bit more uh, about uh, your knowledge, experience, and what it takes to be a uh, world leading champion in <laughs> yeah, but in, in a professional athlete. Yes, a professional athlete in in enduro riding. Uh, then, first of all, I am really happy to be here in Republica Dominicana. I have to say that the. The welcoming of the people here is just amazing. And when you arrive with the plane and you see all the beaches there, it's like a dream. So super happy to be here. Uh, the vibes, it's amazing. People are so warm. So yeah, and as you say, I have a strong community in South America. It's the first time for me that I travel through that side of the planet. First time in America for me. So that's so cool. I'm super hype and I'm super happy to be here for sure. Thank you, Greg. This is, it is it is a privilege for us having a, a world-renowned uh, figure in the uh, motorsports uh, industry, to say it that way. Uh, you ride motorcycles, I don't know, since you were a kid? I started riding bike. I had not even four years. I started like around three and a half, four years. My father put my put me on an Italjet. I don't know if you know that brand. No. It's a, it's an old brand. You, you should see that that uh, that brand. They only build really small bike. And then I start um, then I start to ride a uh, trial bike with my with my father a lot. And I stopped riding around 18 years and then I start again to ride at uh, I think I had 25 26 years. Okay. Yeah. So but basically I start with trial bike. And it was always off road. This was always your passion or you started in a different category of the I mean sport. I mean mainly off road, trial, a little bit of uh, motocross, a little bit of enduro. I ride as well on the street, but as I say before, I'm kind of a little bit scared about riding on the on the street. I don't really love to get involved in the traffic, and because I think it's the most uh, one of the most dangerous thing for me. So I was not riding that much on the street. But in the past, I had my first 990 adventure. You know that the beast, the beast, the KTM, uh, KTM 990. 990 adventure. Uh, I ride a lot with that bike, and this is probably the first dual. Is it the, the first dual bike with uh, the one I ride? And then after that, I get my 790, and then I start to do proper off road with the 790. When I see that that bike, it's so capable to do off road stuff. So being being able to try different bikes, different uh, type of riding, and now being a pro rider, what what made made you choose KTM? over all other uh, uh, good the, other the brands thing, the thing for me at kdm is one of the the is the biggest brand with that off-road spirit so naturally i go to kdm and in the past i was really uh, i buy my first kdm it was 250 exe 2017 wow uh, yeah uh, the the carburetor one the last uh -huh, the last uh -huh. carburetor one and i start to do on the row hard on the row and then i come to the duel a little bit later and for me yeah and starting working with KDM, it's become because I start to make some video with the 790. I know a little bit the people from KDM Belgium. And then uh, time after time, I have uh, trying to, uh, I starting to have some contact of KDM. And then they say, hey, Greg, uh, you do some crazy shit. Please, do you want to try your 890? And say, oh, for sure, I want to try your 890. So I was going in Matikofen in Austria. Okay. Taking my bike and starting to make some crazy shit, Esberg and yeah, KDM Adventure Rally and stuff like this. Yes, because most of the, in, in talking about KDM, most of the people in our country probably don't know that KDM is an, an European company. It's an European company uh, from Austria. Austria right? Exactly. So uh, being able to be in contact with all of these people, developers, other writers, other professional writers, 
Uh, since when are you officially a part of the KTM brand as a... I started working with KTM three years ago. I think it was in 2021, at the end of the year 2021. And then I received my 2022 brand new KTM Adventure, 890 Adventure Arc. Nice. And then I do us work with KTM. I do as well some production shooting time to time. I get involved on the KTM Adventure Rally. They, they asked me to come to be an ambassador to ride with the guy. And yeah, as well, I create content for them and they share my content on their social uh, media. So that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, you know, myself, I ride since really young as well. And my favorite bike is the 890 Enduro, like the Duo. Uh, although I'm riding the 690, uh, uh, I'm following your steps and looking forward to learning from you. So what what are some tips, some riding tips uh, you would... Uh, like to uh, transmit to upcoming riders uh, from all, all levels or to riders that are already in the off-road uh, stuff off-road stuff let's say adventure riding mm -hmm. uh, because in the Dominican Republic there's some enduro teams and and people who do like hard off-road and and really serious off-road stuff but there most of the people are into adventure you know yeah. a mix of street and my thinking personally in Europe we are it's become a little bit more difficult for us to ride on the road so naturally we have some people that come to dual you say dual we, we say adventure yes so I'm going to say on adventure stuff because they cannot ride their own enduro everywhere where they want so they go on an adventure bike because they can travel far and they can ride other country but now I feel as well that there is a lot of people, they go directly on adventure bike because the bike first, they look so cool. You know, it reminds a lot yeah, of the rally beautiful. bike yes. and that spirit because a lot of people know the Paris Dakar and Duos bike yes. looks more and more about rally Dakar bike, the, the adventure, uh, the seeking, discover. So I, I would say if you not try an adventure uh, bike, you should try it and, and you will love it for sure because it's much more versatile bike it is but uh for will you consider for someone upcoming to get on a big bike right away or do you recommend to do a progression it depends what you're talking about a big bike for me like 90 it's not really a big bike because for me it's a super unable bike you know the the center of gravity is yes. really low it's really unable to ride with that bike so yes. for me it's even more easy to handle 890 than a 690 but I understand that the 890 is a little bit heavy. So 790 is a really good bike for start. Yeah. Other brand, I don't know, but I'm talking about KDF. Okay. 790 is an excellent bike for start of road riding. And the 690 is still a good bike as well. But my heart belongs to the 890. Yeah, because uh, on our platform, we have uh, already uh, talked about this, this thing. Mm. You know, there's a lot of people who are just, you know, they, they have never ridden a motorcycle. And they want to get into the adventure world or maybe go straight to off-road. And we have advised them, you know, take baby steps at first. Yeah. Get a medium bike, a, four, a, a 390, this for is example. True. This is true, yeah. Uh, and then start, you know, climbing up to bigger bikes with with more uh, HP and, and higher. Uh, if you are a perfect beginner, for sure, uh, you should wait uh, January of the next year because I think Kenny is gonna gonna launch the new 390 Adventure R, oh, and I yeah, think it's gonna yeah. be. We, a, have, we have read about the rumors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I think it's gonna be a, a really really good bike for that for the all for around. Beginners. Yeah, all around bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. For adventure. Something. Yeah, not and dual. it's an adventure bike. It's a 390, a small a smaller bike, uh, more unstable, less weight, and I think it's gonna be a, a big success for the new 390. I saw some videos of you riding. I see you're really skillful, especially doing really slow wheelies. How do you do that? How 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 do you wheelie? How, what's so what's your you technique? Want, if you want to be able to do slow wheelie, first you have to fall on your ass a lot. Okay. You know? This is the first step. You have not. I'm joking, but <laughs> first thing, you have to put your rear. Uh, you have to put the right foot on the rear brake because it's your safety. If the bike go too much on the back, you touch your rear brake and then. The front, the front wheel gonna Lowers. go down directly. So uh, there is uh, several techniques to do it, but we use the body balance a lot and the rear brake, the clutch, and the gas. You put everything in a box, you mix, uh -huh. and it's make a slow wheelie. So basically, it's uh, knowing how to throttle and rear brake. Yeah, yeah, so. but it's not power. You don't, you you even don't use 
that much the power of the bike to to reach uh, the bike out of the ground, you basically use the front suspension. You use your body weight to comprime as much as you can the front suspension, mm -hmm. and then Give it a because gas. it's a, break, a spring, it's coming back, and okay. when it's coming back, you have, you have to go back and sit on your bike, and then you put the weight on your bike, and then using the gas and the clutch. So, so w what are other things about adventure riding that makes you go into the flow you know this flow state when you're in perfect balance of stress and ability what 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 sort of those things you love i mean i like more and more involving my, myself on the on the fast riding rally style i really love it because the 890 is really stable i really love ride that, with that bike and the flow for me when i really enjoy it's a mix between a fast track and single track you know When you push somewhere, but not that much, you go on the top, you arrive, and then you can ride again. This is this is something that I really enjoy too. One question that I had, like a pro being a professional athlete, it, it might seem like you're always working on your bike. Like, I, <laughs> do you take like pleasure riding with friends? Do you go out? Do you have a crew that you go out with and do some, you know, off roading, or maybe let's go to somewhere else in Europe or? Uh, how's your free time looking like? Uh, uh, my free time is basically pre the bike. preparing the bike, <laughs> working on the bike mechanic. No, but man, it's crazy what I uh, what I uh, live now. It's meeting people all around the world, meeting cool people with the same passion. This is cool. This is, doesn't matter if I ride with a with a staffer of uh, a really good rider. If the guy loves to ride, it's enough to be a good day. You know what I mean? What other pros, uh, pro riders, have you encountered? In riding with them, yeah, in yeah. I was riding with Chris Bush. It's amazing because I do, yeah, hoo -hoo. <laughs> Guzman, la creme de la creme. <laughs> no, no, yeah, Chris Bush. Legends, legends. Yeah, legends. Uh, Xavier de Sultre, Johnny Aubert. Um, I probably forget a lot. You know, when you ride hard enduro, hard enduro. I'm not a pro rider, hard enduro. I am a good middle, intermediate, an half yeah. pro. You know, let's say a half pro rider. Okay. But I want to involve involve myself to do Red Bull Romaniacs in gold. I want to be the first Belgian guy to finish the race in gold class. And the cool thing is, if you ride somewhere and you meet a gold rider, I meet Alfredo Gomez, Mario Roman, Gra Jarvis, Graham Jarvis. If you ride there and they are around the corner. You're gonna ride with them, and they're gonna be super happy to show you something. So I ride a lot with a really good rider from Germany as well, and they are super cool too. Super happy to help you and to ride a little bit with you. Most of them, they are super cool guy. Yeah. So, so I hear you. You've been all over the world, uh, pleasure riding, competition riding. Yeah, you live this. Uh, how hard has it been um, with some? Uh, Have you had any accidents? Have you stood up from the accidents? Uh, tell me a little bit more. What have you learned? Yeah, I broke. I, I mean, yeah, if you don't broke yourself, it's because you don't ride fast enough. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, I've heard a lot of this. I heard a lot of this. This is this might be dangerous because yeah. there's people that kind of say, oh, "I'm gonna." I mean, it. don't don't no. don't get stupid and don't don't yeah. don't do stupid thing, guys. Safety first. But I mean, for sure, if you want to try to get better and you want to be faster, you take more more risk, and then uh, the learning. experience come with broken stuff. And yeah, I broke a lot. <laughs> I broke my both knee. I broke some ribs, the hand, the heel. Uh, Your butt doing wheelies. 80% yeah. of my of your body. Happened. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, you know, I was I was on the hospital um, uh, to do um, uh, Eric's, you know. That's I don't right. remember X ray for I don't know, don't remember for what. And then I had to, to go on my personal account of the hospital and I see since 2020 how many times I was doing an Eric's and I was like, what? I don't know, maybe 20 or 25 times. Yeah, yeah. You, you probably ran out of x-rays right now. You can't do any more x-rays. <laughs> yeah, but that's important for the, our community to see that it's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of uh, recuperation, recovery uh, behind uh, to be where you are right now. You know, people that do, um, I don't know how to say in English, but we say in French, ultra trail, the ultra marathon and stuff yes. like this. When, do, when you ask them, hey, did you enjoy to suffer for 180 kilometers running and doing bicycle? And they say, mm, I don't really enjoy, but I enjoy in the same time. So the, the limit between the pain and the enjoying sometimes when you do something hard, it's really it's thin. Small. Yes, it's, it's really small. So. We already talked about your favorite brand, bikes, experience. 
what does it take physically to train? What, what do you do? How do you work out? What? The thing is, if I want to succeed in gold, this is a big, big step uh, in front of me. And I have to do much more physical stuff. I mean, going to run, going to do bicycle, going to the gym. And I really have to, to push more about that. Um, uh, don't drink alcohol. I almost stopped drinking alcohol since, uh, since months. It's helped for the inflammation on the, mm -hmm. yeah. on the, on the, bowl, on yeah. the joint and everything. Being a Belgian, you don't miss being. Hey, man, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. Socially, I, I, I lose some, some point, but uh, I do my best. And yeah, but for riding adventure bike, this is a cool thing. I think you don't need to be an athlete if you want to ride an F1 on an adventure bike. You just need to, to enjoy, and enjoy and ride your style. You don't need to be the best athlete, but for sure it's better if you are a little bit fit because you will be, it's, be, it's going to be easier for you to ride more. The thing is, more fit you are, uh, more or less tired you are on the bike, and then you enjoy more your yeah. riding, you know? Yes, of so, course. We have, we have seen people who are not, uh, especially being in the tropics, we we experience a lot of humidity and high temperatures That's going crazy, off-road. And when you have to lift your bike, when you have to do uh, some, uh, you know, avoiding uh, obstacles on the road, uh, you have to be physically ready, yeah. you know, to handle these kind of bikes that are heavy, one, 180 kilograms, 200 I mean, kilograms. So, uh, uh, yeah, what what would you think is the basic training or, you know, or... Or exercises that a uh, that a uh, that an adventure biker should do to keep itself, you know, in a decent shape to ride this kind of bikes. I think if you want to be good at riding bike, you should. I riding your bike, you should ride more your bike. You know, more you're gonna ride, more fit you're gonna be, and then maybe. So it's like take... training on top of a bike. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and no, it's the same for everybody. If you have to reach your bike one time on the ground, of the ground, it's okay. Ten time, it's a problem. Um, I would say I think the best. Um, Exercise, it's to cycling because it's, yeah, if you go it's the most similar mountain bike, activity. yeah, it's kind of a similar one. And it's still a cool one because I really love to do mountain biking. It's really cool. It's neck, it's something similar from the bike. And then it's, yeah, it's something I think that can give you more stamina. So Greg, we, we talk about all the hard work, dedication, and all that you had to put on the side to be where you are, all the pains, all the tears, all the sweat. Uh, what do you fear? What what makes you uh, tremble on and off the bike? I want to know you personally. What 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 do you fear? I mean, when you ride a bike, most of the time you are really focused, and I think you don't have any fear. But I have to say, when you have to send a big jump for the first time, when you have to open a jump, you know, you don't know the place, and you know that basically it's possible to do, and you have to put the third gear and upper full throttle to pass the jump. Uh, I don't know if it's fear, but the, adrena the, the, the adrenaline dose that you get, it's fantastic. So you did it again after. Um, for sure, riding on the street, I don't really like, like I say, riding fast on the street, you know. I'm all the time, I respect a lot the fact that maybe someone's going to be stopped on the road. So, yes. And I have to say, when I ride in Romania, for example, and you are alone in the wood and you are lost, And then you think, hey, man, this is plenty of bear here. Bears, you know? Bears, yeah. yeah. Bears, brr, bears. Yeah. This, is, this is something that uh, you, you see a lot. You see a lot of bear when you ride in Romania. And it could be something mentally kind of complicated. How do you it. run from a bear? I mean, um, the problem is, I think, <laughs> and and if you have to run from a bear, you already, uh, you already die, you know yeah. what I mean? So uh, I respect that a lot. On the first part, you said about road riding. Uh, you're a professional. I, I'm sure you're really confident on your abilities, but saying that you're scared about r fast road riding. And afraid about the other guys. Exactly. Right on the road. Really, even if you are a really good rider, think that everything can happen. It could be, I don't know, a beast, a car or something, then really safety first, be smart, you know, life's good, life it's yeah, uh, exactly. so nice to live, yeah, so yeah, yeah, live longer, ride slow down, slow down, and yeah. Yeah, you, know, there, the there's, right you can have fun, you can go into the flow state, you can do pop-up wheelies, you can jump and we do say, a lot of cool say stuff. We ride 80%. We don't ride 100%. Yeah. You only ride 100% when you race and you are, you know, in a, in controlled a, in a control. Yes. But when you are on the road, you should never ride 100%. 
Yeah, I'm glad that you can, you're mature enough and you can transmit that to our community that you ride good, you're an extreme adventure rider, but you control yourself. And, and, yeah, I, will, I, will say and I, I respect that. I acknowledge that. And I want people to hear this because not all professional riders are that mature. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I have seen uh, in our experience, uh, the more experienced riders and mature riders are the ones who are always, you know, taking good care of things, taking good care of the bike themselves. They have, they want to come home uh, to their families as well, uh, because we see a lot of reckless driving in our country. Sadly, uh, we are a country facing this, this kind of issues and challenges. Uh, our death rate in motorcycles is really high. Yeah. Uh, and we want to bring a message of safety, of you know, riding with more conscience that you have a family waiting for you at home. Exactly. Uh, and even we are having fun and in a semi-controlled environment where we are dressed right, we have our proper bike, uh, but not always. It, it depends on external things. It depends on the mind. It depends on the emotions, right? Yeah, it can be a, so many things can happen. Like you say, it can be you, it can be the street, it can be the roads, humidity, the moisture, it can be a car. So there is... You can ride like a reckless, but you need 100% of luck every time. And that one percent of the time you will have a problem, you are doomed, it's for sure. Yes. And talking about uh, fears, mental mental preparation and physical preparation, as Tony was saying, how do you prepare for your rides? Physically as yourself, as Greg, and how do you prepare the bike? How do you, ch you check? Uh, how's your tire pressure? What do you do physically f uh, to the bike? We have seen you, you were changing skid plates tires you are preparing for for, for your example, ride in the, in the country for example here for republica dominicana i prepare myself the the story it's pretty boring it's not really long but i put a skid plate on it yeah. to protect the engine because the original one it's a little bit weak so if you go hard on hard ride you should protect the engine um then i change the tires i put some metas tires there on it uh some the enduro trail xt plus uh this is the tires that I ride mostly everywhere in the world. And, oh, and why Mitas? Sorry that I interrupt you. Why the, Mitas? Uh, why Mitas? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's the best combination uh, because first, they provide hard enduro tire and I need hard enduro tire and they provide... Yeah, for a big bike like this, it has to be... A... Yeah, no, for I, I mean, so, sorry, for the enduro, I have my range of uh, tires for okay. the enduro yeah. and I have my range of tire for the adventure bike. And they have a proper set of uh, rally tires. This is named the Enduro Trail XT yeah. Rally Pro yes. or Pro. Yes, we know. And then that tires for me fit perfectly on the 890. You have a perfect mix between uh, grip and durability. This okay. is why I put that tires. Then for the rest, uh, personally, I remove the foot pegs on the back because it could be dangerous if you ride a lot on off-road. You put your foot on the ground and then when the bike comprimed, the spring comes, you, you can broke your yeah. ankle with the with the rear um, pegs. That's so good. I remove the rear, rear pegs and I remove as well the the holder on the bike because basically I don't need it. So good less weight you have on your bike, better is it. Good to know. I just learned that uh, trick. Thank you. For me, I see a lot of people that I try to correct or people come to me on Instagram asking me, hey, I to put this, this on my bike. But me, I try to remove weight of my bike. I don't try to put too much weight because if you want to protect your bike 100% with, uh, you know, a big protection on the front, on the back and, you know, big top case, big, your, the bike becomes too heavy and it's hard to ride. So obviously, like obviously the kind of riding that you do, it doesn't involve any cases or no, 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 or not bags, no. of course. But you know, I, I do more traveling stuff. Uh, for example, the next month I go in Colombia and I do the adventure rally. I use my Moscow, my Moscow reckless. It's something really okay. easy to put on the bike. Uh, you just need strap. And then I can put, for example, my raincoat, my pen coat, uh, my, my, uh, rain, my, my rain pen, sorry, my yes. Maybe a tube, a spare tubes, and maybe as well, uh, so, yeah, some tools. I already say uh, something, a bar, or something to eat, you know. And what, uh, what are the elements or things that you carry? It's an obligation to carry this when you go out. This is an ex an excellent question, and even more here. In what Greg the, doesn't miss when he's going out? Water, like water, water. If Hydration. you drive without water, you can drive, but after, I don't know, two hours, <laughs> your brain is dry and you, you cannot think properly. 
Yeah. Really, you need water first. So hydration pack, it can be a bottle of water on the on, on the bike. Right. But if you ride out for one hour, okay, you don't take water, it's not a problem. But if you go somewhere, if you for don't take day, the water, yes. you have to drink. It's an obligation. So bike, what would you recommend as a basic as a basic kit to yeah. start riding uh, adventure? It's simple. Ride? If people want to avoid like uh, six months of recovery or knee surgery, they should wear proper knee brace. I already have proper knee brace. Now I work with CTI. Then boots, obligation as well. When I ride, when I go somewhere, I use my boot, my knee brace, for sure. Enduro pant or adventure pant. Um, a chest protector and hydration. And then the jersey complete, the, the complete uh, um, um, jersey and pants from enduro and or That's adventure enough. bikes. The same time. Greg, uh, once again, you're more than welcome here. I know that... Uh, this weekend is going to be an amazing learning experience for for us. And is there anything else you want to say uh, to our community our here? Community. Uh, yeah, for for your community, I say, guys, thank you so much for your welcoming because uh, Dominican seems like uh, seems like to be really warm people. I am really happy to to do some stuff with you. I am really happy uh, to give courses to you guys. One last little question. What can people expect uh, this uh, these ten days that you're gonna be here uh, doing the clinic mm -hmm. with KTM and Grupo Avant uh, and all your your other sponsors, Mitas, and uh, what are you what what are, what can they expect from Greg? What are they gonna learn? Uh, first, having fun because I'm here to having fun first, and then when you have fun, I think everything around is better. And second, I think if The people come in my courses and want to be the pro rider. It's not going to fit. But we're going to see what it's important to know perfectly before to do something bigger. For example, you have to walk properly before wanting to run. Yes. Then we're going to see basis. Basis Amazing. for me, it's the win. If you have good basis, you will ride better. Okay. So if you try, if you work more on the balance, on the body position, on the control of the bike, and you are able to ride really slow on the bike, you have 100% of control on the bike. Okay. Then when you ride faster, you keep that control. But if you try to ride fast directly, it's not going to fit. So basically, we're going to see some bases. And for sure, at the end of the day, if someone wants to pop a wheelie, we're going to do some wheelie, okay, okay. front wheel. And well, Garek, in, in the name of our community, the driver show, the fast element, uh, we want to thank you for allowing you Uh, allowing us to have this interview uh, interview with you uh, with you uh, learning your own experiences as as a professional athlete globally uh, this is your first time in the country we want to have you more in the country where you are very welcome uh, to visit us whenever you want on work or yeah i hope whatever. it's not the last time uh, I, i bet saul is going to bring you some other time so that uh, that, uh, that we are grateful for and we want to thank you for that thank you guys all right thank so, you Nada, eh, aquí nos despedimos de esta maravillosa entrevista con Greg Burdín y esperamos que todos las hayan disfrutado. Greg estará en el país impartiendo unas clínicas donde él ya dijo que se va a esperar. Aprender lo básico, divertirse y quizás al final compartir también eh, con todo el que esté ahí. Y le agradecemos a, a Greg por habernos permitido tener esta entrevista a Saúl, a Guayo y nada. KTM, Grupo Avant, Mitas, muchísimas gracias por esta oportunidad. Así que nada, hasta la próxima. Chao, chicos. Chao, chicos.